What is your name, please? My name is Ladislas Fargo. What is your name, please? My name is Ladislas Fargo. What is your name, please? My name is Ladislas Fargo. Two of these people are imposters. Only one of them is the real Ladislas Fargo and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Geritol, America's number one tonic. Geritol, the fast-acting, high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger, fast, presents To Tell the Truth. And now, here is our host and dealer in fact and fiction, Bud Collier. Thank you and good evening. This is a game, as you probably know, of deliberate misrepresentation, wherein four presumably smart people try to find out which one of three challengers has sworn to tell the truth. And now let's meet our cross-examiners. What is your name, please? My name is Polly Bergen. My name is Bob Considine. My name is Hildy Parks. My name is Dick Van Dyke. And I can attest that these people are telling nothing but the truth. Now, standing right up here, are three people, all of whom claim to be the same person, by name, Ladislas Fargo. To tell the truth, only one of these people is Ladislas Fargo. The other two have merely assumed his identity in an effort to fool our panel. And, of course, they don't have to stick to the truth. Now, panel, if you'll open the envelope that is in front of each of you, you'll find a photostatic copy of an affidavit. Would you please listen and follow along as I read it? I, Ladislas Fargo, am an authority on international intelligence and espionage and have written 13 books on this and allied subjects. As a foreign correspondent, I had several interviews with Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini. I flew in Hitler's private plane, rode with Mussolini in his special armored train, and for my work during the Ethiopian crisis, I was decorated by Emperor Haile Selassie. Although during my youth I became involved in a duel with sabers, I managed to keep my skin intact until I was wounded while covering the Spanish Civil War. During World War II, I spent four years in Washington, D.C. as Director of Research and Planning for the Special Warfare Branch of the United States Office of Naval Intelligence. In this connection, I was directly involved in the writing of the text of the Potsdam Declaration. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Sign, Ladislas Fargo. Now, we'll put our panel to work in just 30 seconds. Play our game. Now, these three people all claim to be Ladislas Fargo, authority on international intelligence and espionage. Remember, panel, only the real Ladislas Fargo is required to answer your questions truthfully. The others, of course, can uh, avoid the truth from time to time. Each of you will uh, receive a sufficient amount of time to question, and you will stop each time when I ring the bell like that. You'll have a total, all told, of five minutes, at the end of which you'll be asked to mark your belt with your opinion as to the one who is the real Ladislas Fargo. All right, let's give the first 30 seconds tonight to Hildy Parks. Oh. Uh, number three, would you tell me, during the Spanish Civil War, who were the phalangists? The phalangists were the troops of General Franco. And what were the other troops called? The loyalists. Uh, number one, would you tell me, uh, you were decorated by Halle Selassie, what is one of his titles? The Lion of Judah. Uh, where does that come from? Do you know that? Comes from Queen Sheba's visit to Jerusalem. I see. Uh, number two, could you tell me what year it was that you were wounded? I, I couldn't hear you. I was... I'm sorry, number two. I'm sorry. I was wounded in 1937. And where? In Ooh, what a time to break in. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke. Uh, uh. <laughs> I don't know too much about these subjects here. Number one, you were a foreign correspondent. Yes. Um, what size trench coat do you wear? <laughs> <laughs> 44. And you wrote 13 books. <laughs> don't you think that's an unlucky number? <laughs> Let's see here. What did Hitler say? Uh, did you interview Hitler uh, during his reign as dictator? I interviewed him three times, once before he became dictator and twice after he had become dictator. Uh, did you interview him at any time during the Second World War? No, not during the Second World War. I see. Number two, can you... Uh... Sorry, Dick. Polly Bergen. Number one, uh, are you a citizen of the United States? Yeah. 
When did you become a citizen? 1952. 1952. Number two, are you a citizen of the United States? Yes. When did you become a citizen? I became a citizen in 1945. And number three, are you a citizen? Yes. When did you become? 41. 41. Uh, number one, could you tell me uh, what is the name of the highest non-commissioned officer in the Navy? Warrant officer. And number two, could you tell me? Not at this present. No. Number three, could you tell me the title? Warrant officer. Uh, number two. Uh... Sorry, Polly. Bob Considine. Number one, was there anything unusual about Churchill's signature on the Potsdam Declaration? Uh, I, I can't remember. I don't know. So I haven't signed, been in Did Potsdam. he sign it in some odd way? I don't know. I don't even know whether Churchill was still prime minister when the proclamation was issued. I think Attlee might have been the prime minister by then. Um, tell me the name of a... Um, your, your intelligence work. Um, tell me the name of a, an intelligence officer... Uh, former Air Force, whose first name is uh, Julio. Felipan? Julios. I think Amos. Um, sorry, Bob. Back already to you, Hildy. Uh, number one, you interviewed uh, Mussolini. Uh, what language did you speak with him? <coughs> number one. Oh, German I spoke with him. With uh, Mussolini? Yes. Number two, what language did you speak with Mussolini? Through inter interpreter. Uh, you spoke... No, he didn't understand English. Oh, but you spoke English and he uh, answered to his interpreter yes. in... Number three? For the first time in German, which Mussolini spoke, for the second time it was too important to speak in German, and he spoke with an interpreter where I spoke in German. Uh, you say it was too important to speak in German. I gathered that you then interviewed him the second time uh, during the Second World War. When no, 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 before, long before the Second World War, but his rise of power was already stupendous. I see. Um, Sorry, Hildy. Dick. Number three, uh, what do you do for a living right now? Right now, I am a writer, lecturer, and uh, I have a very interesting job. I am a technical advisor for a television show named Mr. X. I see. Number two, what do you do for a living now? I'm just lecturing and writing. On uh, espionage and intelligence? On various objects. I see. Subjects. No, number one, what do you now do for a living? I write books, and uh, I am technical advisor of a television show. What television show? Mr. X. <laughs> Mr. X. <laughs> I'll leave you on that point, Dick. <laughs> Polly? Well, I've seen Mr. X, and are you sure it needs two technical advisors? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> number one, uh, could you tell me, uh, is the Coast Guard under the jurisdiction of the United States Navy? No, the Coast Guard is an independent branch of the United States government, uh, Armed Forces. Uh, who are they answerable to? To the Commandant of the Coast Guard and the Treasury Department. Number two, could you tell me uh, who the uh, Coast Guard falls under ju jurisdiction? Coast Guard under the uh, jurisdiction of the uh, Armed Forces. Uh, number three, could you tell me... Uh, who the Coast Guard falls under? Uh, department. I see. Uh, number one. Uh... Bob, number three, could you give me the nickname of a famous uh, correspondent whose uh, initials were HR? I'm sorry, I don't think so. Um, number one. Bob. Well, that's about it, Bob. I'm sorry to have to stop you right there, but I think the time, the five minutes are gone. You should have enough now to separate fact from fiction. And this is, as you know, a secret vote because the amount of money our challenges may win depends upon the accuracy of your individual selection. So will you mark your ballots, please? And while our panel are marking their ballots, we're going to give our good friends at home another chance to take a look at the team of challenges so that you folks at home can decide whether you think the real Ladislas Fargo is number one, number two, or number three. Now may I have the ballots, please? Now, as you know, there were four votes cast. One vote from each member of our panel. Each incorrect vote means $250 for our team of challengers. And if all four are guessed wrong, then there's $1,000 that you will whack up between you. So let's see how our panel voted. This is Polly Bergen's ballot. She votes for number three. 
Bob Considine marked his ballot for number one. Hilly Parks believes it to be number three. Dick Van Dyke is marked as his choice, number three. So a fast rundown will show us that number one has one vote, number two, no votes, number three, three votes. Panel, how do you feel? Terrible. Are you all sad? Huh? <laughs> What's the matter? You changed your mind already, Dave? No, but it's obviously number two. It's obviously number two. <laughs> All right. Will the real Ladislas Fargo please stand up? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, sir. Now let's find out. Well, let's find out who the others are first. Number two, who are you really and what do you do? My name is John W. Cordish, and I'm a professional hypnotist. <laughs> That's the way he got away with it. <laughs> Number three, who are you really? Sir? My name is Dr. Gabor de Bessonet, and I'm a public relations consultant for colleges and universities in Washington. Thank you, sir. Now... Uh, <laughs> Polly, what do you want to ask? I would like to ask, number one, uh, did you misunderstand my question, or did you not know that the, uh, that the Coast Guard is under the jurisdiction of the Treasury Department? I said it's under the Treasury, the Treasury Department. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you say that. I thought you said the, the, uh, the uh, head hear. of the Coast Guard, which I is, said is that what it's threw it's me to number three. I said the of the Commandant of the Coast Guard and the Treasury Department. Oh, I, I just heard you say Commandant of the, tre of the Coast Guard. I'm awfully sorry. I tried to live up to the name of the Well, program. believe me, I wish I'd heard all of it because that's the only thing that changed my vote to number my three. I'm huh? sorry. The only thing that warned me away from uh, the good doctor here, number three, was that uh, he uh, naturally would not know that uh, H.R. Knickerbocker. Knickerbocker was Red Knickerbocker, uh, the ah. famous uh, correspondent who Red died later in Bombay, you know. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have. If you had a question, Hilly, we'll have to hold it and ask them later. I'm sorry, but you've done mighty well. Believe me, as a bunch of challengers, you've done real well. Uh, let's see how you have done. As a matter of fact, we have here one vote for the real one, which made three wrong votes for a total of $750, gentlemen, which you will divide with our best wishes, and thank you very much for being our guest tonight. Good night. <laughs> Let's have our next team of challengers, please. <laughs> what is your name, please? My name is Paul Jump. What is your name, please? My name is Paul Jump. What is your name, please? My name is Paul Jump. Two of these people are imposters. And as before, only one of them is the real Paul Jung and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Well, here, panel, we have our second problem for the evening. These three people all claim to be Paul Jung. As you know, only the real Paul Jung has sworn to tell the truth. So if you will open that envelope again, you'll find another affidavit. Will you follow along while I read it? I, Paul Jung, am a clown with Ringling Brothers Circus. I was born in the Midwest, and when I was eight years old, I found myself playing the part of a girl in a professional acrobatic act with my brother. When it became obvious to the audience that I was not a girl, we switched to a comedy acrobatic routine and started clowning. I have traveled through Canada, Mexico, and South America with the circus, and I have worked in both burlesque and vaudeville. For a short time, I was a working member of the Carpenters and Joiners Union. And now, during the off-season, I own and operate the Laugh Factory, where I create, produce, and build the props for clown acts, for circuses, ice shows, and other spectaculars. I swear that the above statement is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Signed, Paul Jung. Next problem in playing our game, these three people all claim to be Paul Jung. Panel. Remember, only the real Paul Jung is required to answer your questions truthfully, and again, you'll question until you hear the bell ring for a total of five minutes, and again, you'll be asked to mark your ballot for your individual opinion as to which one is the real Paul Jung. All right, we'll start this time with Polly, Polly Bergen. We should do that because you have a daughter here tonight who is having a birthday, isn't she? That's right. Happy birthday to her. Thank you. 
Number one, uh, where were you born in the Middle West? Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio. Uh, uh, could you tell me the uh, name of the town in Ohio that was named after a famous Western story writer? Number two, where were you born? In Ohio, near could, Columbus. Near Columbus. Could you tell me the name of the uh, famous Western story writer who had a, a town named after him in Ohio? Zane Gray. Uh, number three, where were you born? Peoria, Illinois. Peoria, I don't know a thing about Illinois. And you're not going to find out. <laughs> Bob Considine. I'd like to inquire of all these gentlemen where you got my old nose. <laughs> <laughs> Say number two, uh, Mr. Young, Jung, you were um, in vaudeville, you say. I see by your prospectus here. Um, which came first uh, in a famous old circuit, Considine and Sullivan, or Sullivan and Considine? Sullivan. Um, what is an all? You're speaking of carpentry? Yes. Well, it's the part of the... Uh, bit that fits into the brace, you know, when it goes around like that. <laughs> Could you do that with your hands tied? <laughs> Pardon me, Mr. Constable. Could you do that with your hands tied? <laughs> Hilly. Uh, number one, uh, when you're traveling with the circus, where do you winter? Do I or the circus? You mean me? <laughs> Don't all stay together? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the circus winters in Sarasota, Florida. Where do you go? Well, if I'm not working, I go to my home in Tampa, Florida. Oh, I see. Uh, what's tan bark? Tan bark? Well, it's bark off a tree. Number three, and what do you think tan bark is? <laughs> Sawdust. Uh, what, do the, what are the stagehands called in the circus? Stagehands are called rustabouts, And drips. Yeah, what time, uh, what time of day do you generally get to a town, and for what reason? Get there as late at night as possible so that we can set up as early as possible. And what do you use? Sorry, Hilly Dick. <laughs> Number one, <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh, you played the part of a girl when you were a child. Did you wear symmetricals? Yes. You know what symmetricals are? Yes, they're a pad that, uh, that you wear to make your legs more shapely. <laughs> That's right. Number two, uh, what do they call it when all the clowns come out? and go around in, uh, occasionally in the circus at intervals. What do they call that entrance? The speck. Pardon? They uh, call that the speck. When the, when the whole troop, the whole circus troop comes out and goes around, that's the speck. I mean, just, just the clowns. Uh, that's a speck also. Number three, uh, what, what famous clown just left Ringling Brothers? I didn't hear that. What famous clown just left Ringling Brothers? Uh, Emmett Kelly. Right. Polly? Number one, do you know uh, what Emmett Kelly's profession was uh, when he first started with the circus? Well, uh, I know because I've read the book and because I know Emmett. He was an aerialist. Oh, because you read the book. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's the only reason why I happen to know it myself, as a matter of fact. Uh, number two, um, gee, we got out of Ohio and I don't know a thing about clowns. <laughs> no, number two, uh, how long have you been with the circus? Well, I started out when I was eight years old, so that's a, close to uh, 50 years. But I started. Bob? What, uh, in what city in Massachusetts, number three, in what city in Massachusetts did a great tragedy take place? In where? In, cir in Massachusetts, in the, in the circus world, Boston. in Connecticut. Boston. Connecticut, it's Bridgeport. Um, I thought you had the wrong state. Number, number three, uh, let me ask you this also. Uh, what famous clown first Wait, we have Felix. to stop it there. You should have had time enough now again to separate fact from fiction. Sorry, Bob, but will you all please mark your ballots? And again, a final look for our good friends at home so that you can make up your minds whether you think the real Paul Jung is number one, number two, or number three. And now may I have the ballots, please. Again, as before, we have four ballots, of course, one marked for each member of our panel. And again, there'll be $250 go to the challenges for every incorrect vote. So now let's see how our panel voted. This is Polly Bergen's ballot. She votes for 
Number two, Bob Constantine marked his ballot for number two. Hilly Parks believes it to be number one. Dick Van Dyke has marked as his choice number one. So a rundown will show us that number one has two votes, number two has two votes, number three has no votes. All right, panel. Yes, Polly. It's really not fair. I just put my glasses on, and I want to change my vote. <laughs> I'm sorry you can't. But it's not fair. You came out of the voting booth and... I'm and working blind. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see how well you work blind, okay? All right, may I make my... May I change my voice? Uh, my, my Orally? Voice, orally? No, you wait and see what happens, and you can tell us later. Okay. Will the real Paul Jung please stand up? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the orders that I got. <laughs> when you come out of that voting booth, Polly, that's it. That's just terrible. <laughs> All right, number two, would you tell us who you really are and what you really do? Don't tell me. Oh, be. <laughs> I voted for you. Too. <laughs> oh, my name is Earl Wilson, syndicated columnist for the New York Post. <laughs> And now, number three, who are you really, and what do you do? Oh, those noses. <laughs> Here, Bob, you can have that back. <laughs> now, we're going to find out any moment now, we hope. Uh, we'll tell right there. <laughs> I don't know how much My name is High Gardner, Harold Shredner. <laughs> 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 Paula, you had your hand up. What did you want to ask? It's it just terrible. isn't fair. Nobody, <laughs> Bob. Listen, I never thought of the post or the Herald Tribune as a clowning performance, but uh, <laughs> boys, you really put it over tonight. Uh, I mean, that's <laughs> wonderful. Hildy. <laughs> Watch the performance of number two and number three, and number one is just sitting there. I'm terribly afraid that maybe his nose doesn't come off. <laughs> <laughs> How about it, Paul? It does. <laughs> I'll take it off to prove it. <laughs> I can get this glove off. <laughs> there. 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 Yes, uh, Dick. Uh, I, at Madison Square Garden, I once did the part of a clown with the circus, and that is that the face you use all the time, Paul? Yes. It is? Yes. You, you design your own face, don't yes, you? Yes, that's right. And then it Each can't one be used has by any other clown. Well, if anyone else puts a makeup on it, at close you can tell the curvature of your face changes the uh, expression on your face. Sure, it changes yeah. the curvature of their face. <laughs> <not. laughs> well, Bob, I, I thought Bob would get me immediately because the white is my natural complexion. <laughs> yes, uh, <laughs> well, you did a great job. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed having you. And, of course, you had, uh, let me see, one, two incorrect votes for $500, which you will divide with our blessing. Thanks again for Thank being you. with us tonight. Good night. Good night. Turn to our panel. Here is a word about another of ours. Now it's time to say goodnight to our panel, whose names, in case you have forgotten, are. My name is Nearsighted Nelly. <laughs> I'm the real Paul Jung. <laughs> My name is Gravel Gertie. <laughs> uh, Merv Griffin. <laughs> well, to tell the truth, I am Bud Collier. And before I say goodbye, I would just like to remind you that although infantile paralysis is on the run, it is not beaten yet. As a matter of fact, today, 80,000 disabled polio victims need your help for recovery. So help finish the polio fight. Join the 1957 March of Dimes. Good night until next week. <laughs> Travel arrangements for To Tell the Truth are made through American Airlines. American Airlines flies our contestants in luxurious comfort for DC-7 flight trips. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network.